Hey everybody, I'm going to do a quick little thing on what we call fussy cutting because you're going to be required to do a fussy cut or a couple of fussy cuts in your collage. So what we mean by fussy cut are those things that we actually cut out really close around the edges. So on this one, we actually have, this is a fussy cut. This one is, the leaf is, and actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little jewels um, are fussy cuts. So all of these were cut with a regular pair of scissors, and I'm going to show you an easier way to do it so that you get a better job or can do a better job. But before we get into all of that, let me talk to you just a little bit about what works as a fussy cut and sometimes things that don't work so that you're looking for the right thing. Um, this was um, taken off the internet and I specifically, I did a Google search and found um, tomato and then cut it, but, but ended up, it was mostly circular, but it did have these two tiny, tiny little things. So those were the only hard parts to really cut. So this was a pretty good example of something that you could easily turn into a fussy cut. Um, here's another example of something that this was um, off of a napkin. Um, and so it was basic shapes, nothing really complicated. So another good choice for a fussy cut. Here's our fighting okra. Gotta have the fighting okra. Um, this was a postcard, actually. It was sent to someone, and well, actually, it was sent to my husband, who retired from Delta State after 35 years of teaching. Um, and so I kept the postcard and cut the okra man out. As you can see, it has nothing to make it really complicated. Yeah, it has some little tiny spots, but they're all just really smooth. This, on the other hand, let's look at this. This is a necklace that um, was in a catalog. But obviously, trying to cut around each and every one of those jewels, that's going to be really, really hard. So, in a case like this, we can still use it, but if it's not going to be really possible to fussy cut it the way we might think, but we can leave what we call a little halo around it. Um, in this case, because it was on a solid background, if it were up against a tree or something and, and it wasn't a solid background, that wouldn't work. But by leaving, because it's on a white background we can cut and have a, a very um, uncomplicated white little what I call halo or sometimes we call them grins um, around the object then this would work as a fussy cut. Um, you can find all kinds of things. You can find obviously here was a, a napkin. This was a magazine. These are fussy cuts that you can tell without me taking them out. These are some leaves and things. These came out of a doily and a little flower. Um, a doily are those paper things that you used to use for your Valentine's bags when you were in elementary school. This came from a greeting card. Um, when we cleaned out my dad's um, room after he passed away he had saved a whole lot of Father's Day cards and birthday cards and in going through them I realized I could save so many of those images so this one was really one of my favorites it's a um, an old car here is an old well it's just a regular but here's a uh, motorcycle but again this would be really hard to cut out things like this little teeny tiny mirror and the handlebars, these wires, all of these would be really hard. This part, not so much. This would be an easy thing to cut, but these would be really hard. So it's easier just to cut 
a um, and leave a halo around it and you get a nice image that you can use in a collage there are some tricks to help you do a better job with cutting these things and I'm going to hopefully share some of those Oh, here's two. This was a notepad. This is now that I've moved it. This is a piece of notepad. You'll got to do this. And so, um, here's the little cat that was here cut out. And here's another notepad that once the, um, I had a written all over a piece and rather than throw it away, I went ahead and cut this little part out. And I'm actually going to use this, I think, in my collage um, in another video. So, what are the good tricks that you need to know? Well, for starters, you need a good pair of scissors. Um, most of you will have a pretty good pair of scissors. It doesn't matter if, um, if they're small or long because it's not the size of the pair of scissors, but it's how you're going to use your scissors. Um, for starters, the first trick I want to tell you about is if you're going to cut an object and it's on a bigger piece, then you want to cut it away from the rest of that because having too much paper is sometimes more difficult to cut your object from. It, this extra paper will get in your way. The other thing I want to tell you is that you don't move the scissors. You'll notice when I go to cut that the scissors are basically staying in one place, but what I'm doing is I'm moving the paper and I'm letting the, the blade follow the edges by moving the paper. So the last thing I want to mention is the, the part that you want to use while you're cutting is not the tip. The tip of the scissors is usually the worst part of your scissors, but from about the midway point, this is your sweet spot for scissors, all the way back to right here. <clears throat> so that's what we're wanting to use and you'll see how it works here okay here we go I am going to oops, start here and you'll notice that the scissors are staying in one place okay and I'm going slowly and I am moving the paper. Okay, I'm getting out of the sweet spot so I have to kind of reload. There we go. I've done a nice job with that. Um, I want to cut this white out. And there's several ways you can do that. One is to poke a little hole in there and take a little teeny tiny pair of scissors, like some cuticle scissors, cut that out. Another way is if you take um, like a little, what we call a craft knife. <coughs> But because I'm going to be gluing this down, and I'm going to glue it very well, I'm going to find kind of a, a hidden spot, which if I cut right there, there's kind of a line right there, then I can do the same thing I did on the outside. I can cut, let's see, there we go, get it on in there. the inside by following 
and just turning the paper. It's a little harder when you're doing these little things on the inside. Let's get that behind it. Ugh, whoops. Well, I've lost it. Where is it on here? There it is. Okay. In a case like this, it is better to have a smaller pair, but we can still do it. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here just because I can. All right. When I go to glue it, I'll glue it so that you don't notice that little tear at all. Let's show you what it looks like on the back. Here we go. So when we go to glue it down, you'll never see that. So those are kind of your tricks for fussy cutting. Number one is to remove it from a big piece of paper, get it to a smaller piece, um, say something like this. Number two, keep the um, scissors still and just move the scissors I mean, I'm sorry, just move the object, the piece of paper. Keep the scissors still, but just move what you're cutting. This is really thin paper from a very inexpensive, cheap catalog. But I can still follow even the little fold lines. And then also you are supposed to stay kind of in that sweet spot, which is the middle part of the scissors. <laughs> now, one thing when you're looking at um, people to cut out, look at their hair. And sometimes hair can be a problem. But in this case, she had a really simple haircut. So she is a good choice for turning into a fussy cut. We will trim this out real quick. And then I'll come back in later and get those out. I'm not going to waste our time on that. So there you go. That is what a fussy cut is. And they're a lot easier to do with practice and with you following those three main points. So have at it. You're going to have some um, bumps and things along the way, but I want you to practice and see if you can get it as close as you possibly can so that your collages will look magnificent. Talk to you later.